Assalamu alaikum. Mr. Moderator, our distinguished guests, brothers and sisters, our friends and, and our enemies. He came to me and he asked me um, if I would like to know how he got all of his wealth. Mm. He said he could teach me how to be successful in this world to get anything I want just using the power of my mind. Mm. And um, it was interesting because you don't really see people coming, coming at you like that. Yeah. So I said, um, okay, let me know about it. He told me to get this book. He told me, get this book and I'll teach you how to use it to get anything you want out of life. Mm. So I was like, okay, what's the book? And he said, uh, Think and Grow Rich by Napoleon Hill. Yeah. All right. So every day he would come, I didn't get the book. And then until the day he's like, okay, fine, I'll go get you the book. I'll get it for you and I'll teach you how to use it and you just reimburse me. I said, no, 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 I can't let you do that. I'm working and I'll go get it. Mm. Because he did that, the de that same day, I went mm. and got the book. Mm -hmm. The more I started studying that book, mm. the less I was learning about Islam. Mm. And I started going to Humber College for film media production. Mm. And I always wanted to read a Quran, but I called it the Muslim Bible back then. Mm. So I was like, I need to get a copy of the Muslim Bible. Mm -hmm. There was a musalla, a little room where the Muslims used to pray. Mm -hmm. And um, I guess because I would go the same time every day and it wasn't Salah time, Mm. I would go there and wait for Muslims and I couldn't find anybody. Ah. I just wanted to ask them about Islam. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And I couldn't find anybody. I'm walking in there with my shoes on and everything. Mm. And then it caught my eye, like an English translation of the Quran. Mm -hmm. And I was like, I can't steal from God. I can't <laughs> steal a holy book. I was like, wait, if it's God's book, mm. then I could just ask him to have it. Yeah. And if it's not, and then it doesn't even deserve to be on this shelf. Mm. I lied to myself to push myself into <laughs> to, to, doing it. To do it, yeah. yeah. And I was like, God, if this is your book, forgive me. I'm going to put it to more use than the people who have it. Mm. Stuffed it in my pants, ran away. Yeah, yeah. Every single day, reading the Quran, reading the Quran. Mm. And then um, this guy came in again mm. and starts telling me about using this book, Think and Grow Rich. Mm. And then he started leaving the Quran at home. Mm. And now all I'm doing is studying about Think and Grow Rich. Mm -hmm. And I come up with a plan to make about $311 million in about 10 years time. Mm -hmm. And all those plans were coming into action, mm -hmm. doing music and getting into film and movies and stuff like this. Mm. And um, then some event happened. I left the Quran at home one day and mm -hmm. I came home and I came to work and I get off at seven. I go home, um, I take a nap, and then I go to school, take my classes. Mm -hmm. I came off, and I, I, um, I came home, I went to jump the back fence, living with a bunch of my friends, and I see squad cars, those Christmas lights in the front of the house. Mm -hmm. So I'm like, what's going on? I jumped back over the fence, walked all the way around, put on my hood, I see all my friends getting put into squad cars. Their girlfriends being put into squad cars in their lingerie. Um, there's people going in inside the house, like, it was crazy. Mm -hmm. So I, I took off, I slept on the the be, the, uh, the table at coffee time, mm -hmm. came back and there's police tape around the house. I pulled it down, used my key, went in. The whole house was a mess. TV turned over, holes in the wall. Oh, there he is. Mm -hmm. Holes in the wall. Um, everybody's gone to jail, the dog's in the pound. Mm -hmm. But then when I opened the door to my room, mm -hmm. nothing is touched. And the Quran is sitting on the table, the light is shining through the window on it. Ooh. And it's like everybody, everybody I know just got taken away. Mm -hmm. And it's like I got saved. And when I open my door, I find the Quran right there on the table and the lights on it. Mm -hmm. I never felt so small in my entire life. Mm -hmm. Never felt so small. I felt like, you before I was Muslim, it's like you, you almost think like God and the devil are kind of like the, the same, same size yeah. of us. And yeah. they have like the same power. Yeah, exactly. And they're just battling good and evil. Mm -hmm. When that happened to me, I felt like God was bigger than I could ever comprehend and He was right behind me. Mm. And my heart just couldn't stop beating. Mm. And I felt like I was going to faint. And mm. then I hear a knocking on the door. Mm -hmm. It was the police. Mm -hmm. There's nowhere to run. Go downstairs. And he's, and he's like, we've been watching the house for six months. You go to Humber College, right? And uh, you work at Tim Hortons downtown. Mm -hmm. And um, you, the people who you were I was like, yeah, I'm just a black guy who rents the room upstairs. I don't know any of these Chinese people. And I know my friends will say the same thing. Mm. So, like, yeah, we've been watching you this house for six months. You know, these guys were into this, this, this. We found 21 guns. We found all kinds of drugs. You guys have a police scanner and uh, 
Then he told me that um, take whatever you can, sell it, and start a new life for yourself. Mm. Just get away from here. Mm. And um, I took that Quran and I started reading it and like trying to learn. And I lost that job and I started working as um, a temp. And the person who, who I was filling for, mm. the person in front of him was a Muslim. Mm. And every night when it was our break, I would go in the break room and I would read the Quran. And then he came in, Salaamu Alaikum. Like, huh? <laughs> Salaamu Alaikum. Like, I'm not hungry, man. Thanks. <laughs> <laughs> Salami and steak. <laughs> and uh, he's like, um, are you Muslim? And I was like, nah, man, I don't believe in religion. I love this book mm -hmm. and I believe in God, but I don't believe in religion. Mm -hmm. He's like, why not? He's like, look at all the wars and the problems that you see around the world. It's because of religion, man. I don't want, I'm trying to get away from that. Mm. I don't want more of this warring and problems and fighting. I'm trying to get away from that. Mm. And um, I guess he was, Tabliki Jamal, he started trying to tell me to go with him to Montreal for a few days and check out this and that. And I, immediately, my mind starts thinking my enemies sent this guy to try to get me to Montreal to set me up. <laughs> I was like, who sent you? And I started getting angry at this guy. <laughs> and I was like, get the F away from me and all kinds of crazy stuff. Yeah. And I, I guess I hurt the guy, I hurt his feelings and stuff. Mm. And he never bothered me again. <laughs> and um, I started seeing him praying now. Because uh. he'd come to the break room, take a piece of cardboard and start making tahajjud salah. Mm. And then I was like, why are you doing that? And he's like, um, oh, he's just praying. And I was like, well, you know, you're working hard, it's night shift. I'm sure God will understand if you just, like, uh, leave it alone for a little, leave it alone for the night. Mm -hmm. And he said, God gave me my body to work 24 hours a day, seven days a week. For me to show appreciation a few minutes a night is nothing. Mm -hmm. And I was like, man, I like that. Mm -hmm. I want to come and see what's inside of a mosque. Mm -hmm. And um, he's like, uh, I'll take you. Just, just uh, give me a call. He gave me his number, gave him a call. He took me to Medina Masjid. Mm -hmm. He bought me. Uh, Medina Mosque is a, a Tabliki Masjid in Toronto, by the way. Yeah, yeah. in, in uh, Toronto. Yeah. And um, he bought me pizza, mm -hmm. he bought me books, and it was the first time that anybody ever did this for me. Mm -hmm. So it, it shook me because where I come from, it's like, I don't know you, I don't do anything for you. Yeah. You earn my respect and, and do stuff for me, and then I'll start to open up and do these kind of things for you. Mm -hmm. um, but he was just buying me stuff. It even, it even shook my heart. He bought me a pack of cigarettes and he didn't even smoke. I didn't even want it. I just wanted to see what he would do. Mm. So I was like, get a pack of Belmonts. And then uh, he's like, just give him the pack of Belmonts. And it like, it, it softened my heart. Mm. Cause it's like, I know this guy doesn't smoke. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I know he's not even like about that. Mm. And he doesn't even know me, but he's going to do this. Mm. So it's off my heart. And then I went to, um, where is he? Oh, it was over there. So then I went to, um, the, the, the halakha that they were having. It was mm -hmm. the first time I ever seen anybody talking about the reality of shaitan in our society. Mm -hmm. And I, I, I understood it better than the people who were listening to it because I used to be one of those shaitans pushing people to do those things. Mm -hmm. So I understood how, how everything connected. Mm -hmm. And um, that one old man, he came up to me and he like grabbed my hand. He's like, it's time, brother. I was like, okay, I'm going to try this Muslim thing for a few months, and if I don't like it, I'm out. <laughs> so then I took my shahada, yeah. and started going on, like, uh, jamaats and stuff, and, mm -hmm. like, praying regularly. That's one thing good about the jamaat. It really establishes that five times daily salah so in your good. life. Mm -hmm. And um, after that, I started traveling. Mm -hmm. We went, is, went to um, Germany, Turkey, Azerbaijan, Qatar, Jordan. I studied in Egypt for a few years, went to Saudi, um, last time I was in uh, Morocco for the last five years and uh, just recently came back to Canada and uh, alhamdulillah I had a couple of kids up there too, mm -hmm. got my son with me. Mm -hmm. uh, so that's basically how it happened man. <laughs> <laughs> Mashallah, amazing story bro. Uh, yeah, so tell me some of your, your stories. Um, dealing with uh, racism as a Muslim. That was a tough part. That was a tough part because, you know, even before Islam, I never really dealt with racism. Mm -hmm. I've never really dealt with racism being born into Canada as a black person. And um, I've never experienced racism until I came to the Muslim community. Mm -hmm. 
And it's crazy because Islam came to abolish these things from yeah, yeah. the human sickness, the human condition. Yeah. And um, first of all, everything was divided. Like over here, you have a masjid for these kind of people. Mm -hmm. Over there, you have a masjid for a different kind of people. Over there, you have a masjid for this. Like, Let's just call it what it is. You have ethnic masjids, masjid. You have yeah. the Somalia masjid, you have the Pakistani masjid, you have the Croatian masjid. Let's just call it, say it as it is. Which really hurt me because yes. When I would go to those places, they would try to make me more like their culture, and I'm thinking I'm learning Islam. Mm -hmm. So you go to a Pakistani masjid, they don't want you learning Arabic, they're trying to teach you Urdu. Yeah. They're trying to make me wear a shawar kameez, mm -hmm. because I want to wear a thobe for Juma. Mm -hmm. um, I tell them I want to go visit Mecca and go for Umrah, they're telling me you have to go four months to Nizamuddin and Raiwan first. And I'm yeah. like, what is Nizamuddin and Raiwan? <laughs> oh, it's Pakistan, it's the Markas and this and that. I'm like, what is happening? <laughs> I want to read about the seal of the Prophet Islam. I'm asking, I'm trying to take up Rahikul uh, Maktoum. Mm. They're like, no, 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 you don't read the uh, Sira. First, you're going to learn this and this and this and this. Mm. And it's all stuff from their culture. Fadal Amal. Yeah, Fadal Amal and like, mm. um, there was another one. Or, Tablighi Nisab different kinds of books yeah. like those and I was like just trying to be the best Muslim I could so I'm trying to follow everything they're doing and I'm getting sick mm. because I'm eating so much of this oily food and <laughs> spicy food and it's like, it, it's good by the way don't don't get us wrong we love biryani as much as anybody it is delicious but <laughs> it's not the healthiest food in no. the world <laughs> and if you're and if you're trying to give dawah yeah. to a people mm -hmm you really should be coming with their culture. Yeah. Like the prophets, the prophets that Allah sent came from the people to the people. Yes. Yeah. Ilami? Yes, I love you. Ilami? Yes. Ilami? Yes. Ilami? Yes. Ilami? Yes. Ilami? Yes, only you.